Hello guys, how is it going? It is Faker coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra video. Today I would like to share with you guys a tech that I've been playing uh, during my stream today that is going to be featuring Captain Farron. Unbelievable, super excited to see. So Captain Farron got a rework to basically now state that his new effect is not that it will, when you play it, Replace your entire hand with decimates. Now, when it's summoned, you'll get three decimates in hand. So I guess it kind of pushes uh, Captain Farron into more of a late game finishing kind of tool and it, uh, kind of like a Noxus version of like a Lidro sort of, I guess you can kind of argue. But I figured I want to build a deck. So the way I approached Captain Farron was to build a Shadow, uh, Shadow Wiles and Noxus list that is basically the shell of spider aggro that features uh, Captain Farron as a top end, one of the top end cards. And to do that, I basically just went through every spider card, put them all in. Uh, happy to be seeing cards like House Spider again. I think this card's low key been finding a little bit more value in patch 1.4 so far than I may have expected. Going wide against aggro is very relevant. Uh, having spider synergy is very relevant. And in a deck that runs Elise, which is our only champion card, House Spider seems like a great fit. So this, this deck does look to kind of play very aggressive early, uh, but it does have a lot of control tools. Like I am actually going to be running two copies of uh, Raza, as you can see there. That is because we have so much token generation that oftentimes I'm going to play Raza and it's going to demolish mid-range decks. We're talking like Ash, uh, Sejuani, mid-range Frost, or just Tempo Sejuani in general, because I'd have to argue because we are handling the board so well early with all our spiders, that towards the later half of the game, they're only going to be playing like big dudes at a time. So cards like Ryza is great. And of course we have Captain Farron. These are both going to be two ofs. I've tweaked the deck here and there a few times. At one point I had three of each. Realized my deck was lacking card draw because I didn't have Glimpse Beyond in for some reason at first. But we were still finding wins. But a couple of games where I just ran dry. I needed a refill. Uh, Glimpse Beyond is going to provide very good card draw. And it makes a lot of sense with so much token generation. One of the more interesting combos of cards I'm working is uh, Ravenous Flock alongside Sentry. Uh, those two together is really powerful. And it's uh, Ravenous Flock is my answer to Braum at the moment. Plus, in a deck that has so much tokens, similar to like a Swain control list, uh, it's not going to be hard for us to bump into units or ping into units and then find that Ravenous Flock finds tremendous value. Uh, at the moment, being able to deal with like strong mid-range minions is kind of proving to be very good. A couple of Nethergate Collectors, Frenzied Skitterers, just a whole bunch of spider packages. I'm running a couple copies of Caretaker for good measure because that card generally uh, proves to be quite powerful. The most recent and last additions I kind of put to the deck was submitting two Broad Awakenings and Atrocity. Yet to kind of see Atrocity's full potential, but at one point I was uh, three Captain Farron's deep. Removed one, chucked the Trostity in, I realized that card's a bit more flexible and having multiple Captain Farrens doesn't oftentimes do much for us. Once we play one, that's good enough. Uh, I'd like a Trostity, uh, you could also maybe consider another Raza instead, but a Trostity could be over the top finish. Uh, two copies of Broad Awakening, I don't want to run three because it is kind of a suboptimal card but it is going to find you some wide bodies and having more units to activate Raza easily is going to help you end the game. So let's go have some games, guys. I hope you like this new format I've kind of done. I wanted to make it a bit more creative and show some uniqueness. And I had a lot of fun setting this up. And you get to see Captain Farron in the background. It's beautiful. This happened by accident where I found Captain Farron and like, etc. in the game. Like you can actually go to your cards, go to your card collection, find the card, open up a full art version of it with text or without text. It's really cool. If you guys could leave Leave a like if you enjoy the video, that would be much appreciated. Or if you even enjoyed the intro, leave a like. I'll see you guys soon. Enjoy your Captain Farron at 11 and 5, a very strong. The cat lost the game against Deep. Unlucky. I will just keep the Vile Feast. Oh, nice. Oh, there he is, guys. The one and only. Deep in Zorn Sump, Yum Ben Farron was labeled a menace. Unstable, unacceptable in the ranks of Noxus was embraced. He was embraced. Awarded unstoppable. Farron Poggle Champ. This will send them running. 
So I think I'm kind of forced to just tank that. I think it would be a mistake to drag the keg, so I'm not going to do that. Should be no answer to this except for warning shot. Nice. Nice. I will stun this. So if I play Neverglade Collector now, I could get punished by uh, Garen. So I'm just going to swing. Oh, uh, sorry, not Garen. Fucking GP, dude. GP. I need to come out somehow, keep my... Keep units on my board until I get to Raza. Bad man. I'm not gonna trade with the aristocrat. Break their legs. Probably just tank the five here so I can flip the lease. Having like glimpse or something here would be great. Baron Craigasm. I have no strong turn seven play. Close one. Okay, Farrah, Raz is probably going to go unlock this turn, which is great. I'm always up for a round or two. Something for a long Let's just go for it now. Most likely Twisted Fate dies here, which is decent enough for me. Am I trading the GP off? Probably not. I mean the Raza. This makes sense. This means I take three. This means I take no damage. 
I think I'm not going to take damage here and hopefully look to close the game with Captain Farron. And because Spider Queen Elise has Challenger, that's kind of cool. Fuck it. Let's play Farron. <laughs> oh, he has his own Farron. Actually, what if I do this? It's kind of risky, isn't it, guys? I probably shouldn't do that. I should trade off my Farron, for sure. Farron meta, guys! I think we just strictly win, though, right? We have more decimates in hand. He would need to kill me from 13 immediately. I don't think it's possible he can do that, right? He can't kill me from 9, can he? Is it a decimate race? It might be a mistake to actually play Aristocrat. Come on, you can't kill me from 9, fool. Our Farron is the more optimal Farron. Yeah, dude. Steal my cards. Nothing in there is going to change this, except for Vile Feast. Triple, double Vile Feast. <laughs> Yo, what up, Caster Gems? Climb has been going kind of average, but I think we found the source. We're 7 and 2 with this Farron list. Ready to work, Mariah? How you doing? If you're talking to me, I'm doing great. Getting yoinked. Getting really yoinked, though. Elusives with my decks should be pretty good. Keep somewhat of a curve. Useful cards. on my map. I don't know if the kitty would do much more. That cat's really annoying. <laughs> it literally just sits there and meows at you. Skip block. Uh, and then open attack. This is a good block for me. Nah. Fakey, do you know what effects are with the blue honor board? Sorry, I'm not sure. I'm working on some kitty emotes today. Hee hee. Hee hee. Very cool. What's name? The Marcia board? Could that maybe be what you're on about? Yeah, I'm not sure. I've never used the Marcia board before. I only have this board, the Ionia one. This is good. I, the I could almost just end my turn and play the house spiders. House spiders been proving to be quite an effective card again. 
It's been a while since we've really seen it slotting into a lot of decks. Because most decks would be using Crimson uh, Disciple, Blood Transfusion. When you just go on pure spider, insane card. That's my resting face. Yeah, we're going to flip at least here. We might sacrifice some damage next turn, but I think we'll be fine. I can't risk swinging with Elise, unfortunately. Let me change into something more comfortable. Extra hands never hurt. Nothing but it's gonna stun you. It's a guarantee that it can't push. Seems reasonable. I do have Brute Awakening. This is quite powerful. Be happy to float mana for now. So you got six mana. Yeah, we should just uh, Brute Awakening here. Song's hella chill. Because of um certain cards, I'm gonna actually drag that with the three attack. Just gonna yeah, like pretty much destroy his entire board. I'm happy to like trade down completely here. My board doesn't show visual effects. Unlucky. Wow. At least flipped is pretty strong sometimes. I wonder if I can consider cutting Blight Caretaker and just focusing more on the Broad Awakening. But oftentimes, Blight Caretaker is a pretty great card, right? So. It really just comes down to like preference. What's the scare card here? Nothing too much scary. I'm gonna play this. We'll take some damage here, sure. Let's actually pre-grasp this. Just to use our mana. Let's get some healing back. Plus we can get some pretty good trades now. Is it if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, really good open attack here. I kind of would prefer to play Raza this turn, so I'm just going to do this. <sighs> yeah, this feels fine. What, what's the outplay here? If he denies the Raza, I guess that's like the outplay, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually glimpse one of my spiders. I want to throw the action back to him. I can also glimpse next turn as well if he plays something. I want to see if he denies this. I think uh, they tend to run like one, maybe two denies. I guess I kind of have to Raza now. Interesting. I actually deny that. I'm happy with this. Makes me wonder if the Cardi buffed is even elusive or not. I'm just gonna survive this turn, right? That's that's the main goal here. We should be fine. 
So if he drops like a powerful elusive unit, I'll go Frenzy Tsukura. If I was to see something weird like a buffed up hatchling. Coming secondary, that kind of just means not too much. The safe play is probably just to go like maybe double Scudera here. Or even just Netherglade Collector first. Let's get some healing back. So I'm always happy to take this block. We're just doing the safe plays. We are just doing the safe plays. Okay, that kind of puts me in a position where I kind of want to open attack now. Alright, check this out. Yeah, this looks pretty good. And we won't Farron yet. No, we won't Farron just yet. play Farron afterwards because if I if I play something he gets the buff his units and my trades aren't as good I don't think it would have really mattered if I played Farron first it might have still been a win but I'm pretty familiar with his deck list and I'm just minimizing because he can replay the um hatchling which buffs his board so I was pretty happy to play kind of slow seems like most of the time we're just winning before we even make it to Farron Raz has been low-key doing some pretty interesting things it's, it's fading denies. Also, GG, thank you. I will kick the Ravenous Flock. Sand looks pretty nice. These woods protect their own. Okay. Your boy won't swing here. Probably gonna play Caretaker next turn. There you are. Nah, Caretaker is still a great card. Still an amazing card. So I'm really vibing this deck because it seems to be performing decently even prior to getting towards Farron. This is kind of relevant. He can't burst speed out a barrier, which is kind of cool here. Like, I don't think there's any way for him to actually protect this caretaker outside of deny. That's the one way he can beat barrier, if they already have barrier on and you play a fast speed spell. Sick. Having his flocks good. Very good. So in terms of the stack, Ravenous Flock should come first. In case he uses a barrier card, then I can um, Vile Feast it. So now I can Vile Feast this. 
And he's running out of resources, dude. We gotta look to kind of push this game fast, though. So we're definitely going for a big open attack next turn. Unless I find like a board buff. Nah, this is open attack. The climb is killing me. Tell me about it, buddy. Caster. What do you want me to say, man? I'm trying to keep my mindset as positive as possible. As in, I'm trying to take in my losses without being too salty. Really absorbing the information. What is this play? Let's flip a let's flip please. Drop from D2 all the way bottom of D3. That's not bad. I dropped from Diamond 180 LP once upon a time back down to D3. Look, man, hang in there. Hang in there. Proud of how you're not getting tilted. It's easy when you make your own decks, and sometimes if they perform well, decently. I'm just happy to be picking up some wins with this list, if I'm being honest. Taking it one step at a time, I'd be happy if like every, once a day, hang on, oh, it's GG. I'd be happy if on every day on average, I climb up one division. It's all good, master people. It's all just good master people, so you basically can't win if you make a mistake. Especially in Diamond. I'm guessing you're talking about Diamond right about now. I'm sure most of the really good players have already skipped past Platinum. Farron's doing good. Spider Aggro's doing good. Every now and then, Farron's been useful. Remember that one game where I used the Farron as uh, fodder for a Blighted Caretaker? Some of the games aren't making it to that length, but if it ever does, we're pretty confident, hey. Aggro. So I'm pretty much just gonna kick the whole hand and hope to find an aristocrat. This is a pretty decent hand too. And this deck's always gonna perform pretty well against the aggro. We have an extreme board presence as well as uh, lifesteal and removal. So it's always a good matchup against the aggro, especially if they miss a one drop, that's bonkers. And House Spider has been actually performing very well for me. Very, very well. I'll try like in this scenario, oh, we pay the house spider still. I'd be happy to trade down my house spider. My yeah, I'm, I'm fine with this. I'm pretty sure. Look what you did. What's the scare cards for him? Bringing that down in HP. Nothing too scary. You may have a way to trade off my Elise. I would hate to see a second Disciple here with a Blood Transfusion. That would be the blowout card. Solitary Monk's actually a scare card, isn't it? Work's done. The weekend's alive, dude. That's great, man. Hope you had a good uh, week at work, man. Enjoy your weekend. Maybe play some card games. So he drops Disciple, I drop Skidderer. Because unfortunately, I don't know if I'm... Um... I have three to four games lined up for this weekend. Games, what do you mean? Oh, you mean like actual games. Games, games, right, right, of course. Fortunate, I'm taking a lot of damage here. Okay, what's a good card I can play here?
Black Caretaker is going to feel comfortable in this position. Ooh, maybe I should have played the um, Aristocrat. And then maybe that leaves me without Grasp of the Undying though. So I'm not going to go for that play. Wow, this Withering Whale is pretty insane. We end up taking one damage. And we clear his Disciple as well, so that's really good. We take two from the other Disciple, but, you know, I think it's okay. Still feel kind of comfortable. We did kind of not really utilize these very well. I wonder if maybe, um... We might have been better off playing Grasp there. Actually, I feel kind of a little bit on edge at this point. Bow Feast makes things a little bit more comfortable. Hopefully no transfusion. draw here that makes any difference. Probably has an answer here, right? Yeah, fair enough. Now we just started decimate. Wow, I really thought we'd have this matchup in the bag. Now he has the elusive units to kind of trick me. GG, I don't think I can draw anything that makes a difference here. Wow. Probably could have played that completely differently. Those disciples, all oh, those disciples are annoying. Grind all night. I know I should be grinding more. I really should be grinding more, but um, I can only do it in so many doses. I can't go as hard as the other players that go like 24 hours straight. I just don't have it in me. Unfortunately, I thought I might have, and I thought this season I was going to, but judged by judging by my pattern so far, it doesn't seem to be my go. Later, later, dude. Uh, we're gonna play Elise or House Spider. I think it has to be Elise, unfortunately. He doesn't always have the uh, two drop. I can clear the Disciple here. If he blocks it, I got the Ravenous Flock. Nice. This Flock's been proving to be effective in niche scenarios like this. Pretty sure I want to clear the Disciple. Clearing this Disciple means he can't do any cheese stuff. See you soon, Sims. Let's see if we can make this 11 and 5. 11 and 5 should be easy, right? Um, house spider is probably a little bit better here. <sighs> yeah, we'll do house spider. I'll 
Do you even swing? How, how frightening would that be if it doesn't swing here? Why would you swing? He's scared of the ravenous flock. He's scared of the flock, dude. Ah, oh, ravenous flock tech is being beautiful. It's being beautiful. Dealing four damage to a damaged unit or stunned units, not hard. This sounds like Terraria music. Arcade Summoner's Rift. Come on, bruh. Is this Hawk tie, by the way? He didn't swing there. How do I punish him for not swinging, guys? Usually it's like Frenzied Skitterer. Hey, he sure got flocked. Seems reasonable. Ironically, um, maybe I shouldn't swing at all. I can glimpse whatever Crimson Disciple blocks into, and it won't block into this. Okay, we're not going to be flipping Elise this turn, but we're definitely going to be destroying his board a little bit. I can glimpse this. No doubt he wants to block this 1 1 spider, but I think he's too concerned about cards that I don't even have in hand. I want to glimpse this turn so I have a good chance of finding Grasby Undying. I've noticed this deck runs a lot of like Overwhelm cards, plus damage, plus attack this, plus attack that. So what does this mean for us? It ironically means I glimpse Elise. Netherglade is pretty good to see here. I don't think they really run answers for Netherglade. I also might consider Withering Whale, to be honest. I'll take two heal one. Put up some safety blockers as well. So in case of transfusion, I'll block here. How many has he played? He's played one transfusion. They don't always have two in hand. They don't always have two in hand. Do I ever just tank this damage? I guess aggro is probably way too much to tank. Just to flip Elise. Probably not worth it. A triple Farron's feeling awkward. Even though we damage the disciple, this gives us so much more healing. So he can transfusion that, yep, that makes sense. Feels awkward. This triple Captain Farron is going to be the death of us. There's two transfusions down. I thought you only had two. I chucked in another Farron. That may have been a mistake. Because I felt like I wasn't drawing it when I needed it. I think it has to go back down to a 12. Like, you'd just be unlucky not to draw one of them if you have two by turn nine. That's just unlucky. Three Farrens is definitely probably a bit ridiculous. <laughs> but it's a Farron deck, so I wanted to make sure I drew into it, but not three of them. I guess what's the argument here? The chances of not drawing one or the chances of drawing three? I'd say drawing three is a bit more unlikely than not drawing one. So in that case, um, maybe three is okay to keep. I love it. He chose not to block there. The best play that can happen is that he slow plays and doesn't open attack with Darius. That's the best scenario for us. Fuck. He can kill me from this range. How scary is that, guys? Untreat Farron? 
Cannot, we can't untreat Farron. It's not a champion. He's a hero. He's counting up his damage here. And I didn't find my grasps. He could have like overwhelm, overwhelm, buff attack, buff attack. That's just going to kill me one shot. All it takes is three attack buffs and I lose. Oh. It's kind of lucky. We might get him with this Farron. They don't run removal or frostbite usually. And I think I just swing with everything. What goes first? Overwhelm goes first. Least goes second. No, no way, it's a Frostbite card. They don't run Frostbite. Scurry, weakling. What is that? He's trolling me, guys. I've seen this deck roughly. They just run like a couple of free old cards. Nothing Frostbite. He might have an answer here. <laughs> Done. That was a bit unexpected. So why isn't he blocking the... Uh, he dies if he blocks these units. But he can block the Elise there. But not in tandem, actually. He can't play that in tandem. This is an easy block. I do have Withering Whale. I think we've got this. Eleven and five. GG, buddy. Oh, come on! Unbelievable! Unbelievable! The 11 and 5 Farron deck. GG!